the one routine I can't break no matter how hard I try, wearing the purple house coat in every vlog clip. I'm sorry, it's beautiful outside, but it is still too cold in the house to sit around in just a shirt and a sweater. Rosie here, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to yet another weekly vlog. Editing Rosie popping on here to say that I need your help with something. I have this idea for something that I think would be really cool. Yes, it's a video. I need your help with it. And specifically, I need your help if you are interested in storytelling in a non-book format. Storytelling in movies, in shows, in video games, in podcasts, even storytelling through music and like song lyrics, if that is something you're into. If you have an interest in any of these things or any thing that you feel like might be kind of similar and that I just have never heard of before, I would love to hear from you. Send me a message on any of my social medias, they're linked down below, or you can just leave a comment and say, hey Rosie, I think that sounds cool about the whole storytelling thing, and we can chat. I'm breaking the trend from the last couple vlogs and starting this one first thing on Monday morning. Sorry if it's a bit echoey, by the way. I'm down in the basement where we have our workout area and um, <laughs> that's about it. So it's a bit of an echoey room. This week is going to be all about trying to break my routine. Last week's being intentional with my time kind of, I mean, in terms of being intentional and reading a lot was an epic failure. In terms of having a good week, ended up being okay, but wasn't great. This week, I kind of just want to try doing things differently. So every day the plan is to try and pick one part of my routine and change it up, do something a bit different. Life can get really, really samey. Part one, at least, of the routine break was to get up this morning, go for a beautiful sunrise walk, and then do some stretching, which are not things I would normally do in the morning. I'm normally a lie in bed until the last possible minute and then get up and go to work type person. I don't know if I want to get up and be at the door at not long after seven every day. Sometimes it's kind of nice. While I did all of this, I've been listening to Mort by Terry Pratchett. That is my current audiobook read, although it's going pretty well. So not sure how long that'll take me to get through. I'm absolutely loving how Pratchett describes teenagers. He captures everything amazingly. That's why most of us who read and love Pratchett love his work, is he just has the most insightful and precise and hilarious way of describing any situation, but the way he describes Mort and Isabel and Kaylee is just so spot on for like 15, 16 year olds, even if one of them has been 16 for 35 years. Oh my goodness, that sounds like such torture and he captures that perfectly, like what being a 16 year old girl for 35 years would do to a person's brain. Spot on. I'm going to keep listening to that while I get ready for work. Weirdly, you wouldn't think this works, but a fire video on YouTube with the sound on actually somehow makes it feel cozier. Cute candle shouldn't make the, you feel any warmer, but somehow it does. The all important, of course, cup of tea. A whole ass duvet that you just keep in your living room and tuck yourself up under when you are hanging out on the couch or an armchair because it keeps you warm. I know it's probably spring for most of you when you're watching this. You're probably going, Rosie, why are you thinking about cozy things? And that's because it's only March and somehow minus 10 in March always feels so cold because like I feel like my very bones have become chilled at this point. I have no warmth left in me. Even two weeks sitting right by the fire at my parents' house didn't really cure me. <laughs> I just need good proper sunlight and heat, like a little lizard coming out of hibernation. That's not quite here yet for me. What is here though is some reading time. I got my weekly reads from last week edited. Oh my goodness, these videos are a lot of work. It's simultaneously really fun and creatively fulfilling and also kind of overwhelming with how much time it takes. But I don't wanna dwell on that. 
It is about 8 p.m. and it's reading time. This is, I guess, pretty routine because this is exactly the situation I was in last Monday evening. But I've changed it up a bit today by, as you saw, putting on the ambient video on the TV and lighting a candle. I've got myself a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Here, should I show you the cake? I think I should show you the cake. It is a chocolate almond cake with a bit of cayenne and cinnamon in it, and then a Russian buttercream, so that's sweetened condensed milk and butter, plus a bit of almond extract and vanilla. It is delicious. But before I can eat my cake, I have to pick my book, because you know it's like when you sit down with dinner and you can't start eating until you've picked a YouTube video or a Netflix show? It's like that with dessert and my book. I, I have to pick what I'm going to read and start reading before I'm allowed to start eating. So I've sort of got four possible paths I could take tonight, which is a bit much, and I need to just pick one. Path number one, Path of Least Resistance, is Keep Reading Catherine by Anya Sutton. Enjoying this book, very interesting, but very long, so feels a bit, whew, slow. Option two, start Mom and Me and Mom, or Me and Mom and Me. I can't remember the seventh Maya Angelou autobiography. This is one of the last books left on my TBR for the month. I would really like to read it, but I'm kind of hesitant and not sure I'm in the mood for it. I think it's about her deep but troubled relationship with her mother throughout her entire life. I think it is going to be incredible. I totally anticipate loving this book, but it feels like it could be quite emotional and maybe a bit demanding, and I'm not sure I'm in the mood for that. However, option three is the other book that's still really on my TBR for the month, and that is The Marlowe Murder Club? I think that's the title. I might be missing a word. This is a murder mystery that I'm going to read for March Murder Madness, and because I have an e-arc of it, and I would like to get that read, and I'm very excited. I think it's going to be really fun. Basically, all I need to know is that it's got that cover. It's a British murder mystery, and I want to read it based on that alone. I know my cover type in British murder mysteries, and that is it. But there's a but here. If I start that, I'll probably finish it very soon. And at the end of the month, I'm going to be buddy reading The Pull of the Stars on audiobook with Gemma of Gem of Books. And that, I think, is quite emotionally harrowing, intense, all of that sort of stuff. So I kind of want to save the fun murder mystery to read alongside the super emotional historical fiction, not have the super emotional historical fiction and the super emotional memoir about relationship with mother. That feels like it might be a lot at the same time. So that's why option three is not higher up. And then option four is just pick something else entirely and read that. I'm not inclined to favor this option because I really do want to read both books on my TBR, even if they're not what I want to read exactly right now. Honestly, just sitting here describing all those options, I think it's made it pretty clear. I want to keep reading Catherine by Anya Seton tonight. I want to keep making some progress and feel like I'm getting close to being done that. I feel like with long books, I need to either read them super slowly or focus more intensely on them, not do the sort of dragged out thing that I do with my shorter books. I'm just not sure it's working right now, so I'm going to try and focus on Catherine and make some progress, and hopefully I'll be back to talk to you about some actual reading. Okay, I think I actually have some thoughts to share about Catherine, finally. So, quick recap if you missed last week's vlog. Catherine by Anya Seton is a novel about the romance between Catherine, who was the mistress and then wife of John of Gaunt, the Duke of Lancaster, in the 1300s. It is historical fiction that was written in the 1950s, so it's like historical fiction and kind of a classic of the genre, I think, and I would see why. It's super interesting in how it's written. It feels at first almost this could be a biography. As we get more into the emotional side and the relationship developing part of the book, it does feel more fiction-y. Not in a bad way or a good way in either sense, it's just a slightly different feeling. It's a long book, but I would say stick with it past the first few chapters until the relationship starts, because there is a tonal shift here. I am so far, for the most part, absolutely loving how this relationship is being written. 
I think Seton has done such a good job of taking a power structure and a societal framework in which a relationship is taking place, which is incredibly different from that that we're familiar with. And yet the emotions that she's writing about, the way these people are actually feeling with each other feels so relatable. And it's what I would call realistic in a melodramatic way. There's a lot of big ups, big downs, dramatic things happening. It's not a cozy, quiet, little, we live a happy, quiet life together relationship, but it also feels like the ups and downs that actually happen in a relationship. I don't know, maybe I'm just biased, but I'm really enjoying it right now. That being said, I did just come to one line that was like, uh, really? She alone had love enough for him to wrestle with his demon. I kind of hate that, massively, but otherwise it's been good, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, the second half of that chapter maybe got a bit overly descriptive with the emotions. I like descriptive atmosphere and general vibes of a book, but I tend to prefer my intense and deep emotional moments a little more on the sparse side, I think. I think I've read about two and a half chapters of Catherine now, and it's still really interesting. It's still really good. I think it's just not a book that I want to binge. It's not a book that I feel a compulsive need to keep reading the next chapter. I think it's almost better if I read a little bit and then tomorrow read a bit more. Some books are just better suited to that. Just because I'm tired of reading Catherine, though, doesn't mean I'm tired of reading, and that means I kind of need to pick something else to work on. Earlier when I was describing the options, it felt like I should read the Maya Angelou, but as I was reading Catherine, I was thinking a bit about what I wanted to read next, because you know, I don't know, does anyone else think about other things while they read? And I realized that I can't let my TBR get in the way of my enjoyment. The Marlowe Murder Club, or whatever it's called, is what I feel like reading and what I'm interested in reading right now. I should read that. And if I finish it and I want something else similar, I can pick up another book that is similar in March. And if I don't get to the Maya Angelou book for a few months, that's okay. I'm always saying how I don't want to let my TBR take control of me, how I want to use my TBR for good, not to make reading not fun. So I think that's what I need to do here. talking clips yesterday because, I don't know, I felt like I talked a lot on Monday, so I thought I would balance it out a bit. And it was just a pretty normal day. I just did things in a slightly different order. Just little changes, so nothing really worth talking about. Today, I'm doing something that I should probably do a lot more, and that is taking my lunch break to just sit down and read a book. I almost always either go for a walk at lunchtime and listen to an audiobook, which is fantastic, don't want to stop doing that. Love walking at lunchtime, getting lots of sun, getting fresh air, getting that bit of movement in the middle of my day to like shake things up. Or I just work through lunch and that's not a problem. Sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. I feel like a lot of my afternoons would probably be more productive if I actually just 
took a few minutes to sit down and relax and not look at a computer screen and do something a bit different for a little while and then got back to work. So that's what I'm doing today and it was lovely. I've read another chapter of Catherine this evening. I just have not been in the mood to film b-roll at all. So to break the routine of having vlogged for the last couple weeks, I didn't! Yes, anything I do this week will be somehow tied back to breaking the routine, including, I may mention, making meringue nests and pastry cream. I've also edited a video which isn't unroutine for me because I edit videos on average twice a week, if not more. I haven't edited a video in this style in a while, so it was kind of fun and like exciting in its own way. I think it's mostly the onset of spring and the fact that like the weather's warming up. I got to wear just my leather jacket today, not like a winter coat. Literally, I think positive emotions are thawing inside of me. But also maybe it's because I changed my routine. I definitely have to redo this experiment at some point and see what the result is in other seasons because I think the data is biased. You know what? Just meringue nests with vanilla pastry cream is kind of actually like such an amazing dessert. So incredibly basic, so boring. You would always put something like fruit, I don't know, something else on that for flavor, but like there's something about the meringue texture, which by the way is amazing. I'm, I didn't think they were gonna work out that well and actually I'm in love with them. So beginner's luck for sure there. It's just soft and chewy and then the pastry cream is silky and just everything just tastes comforting. All right, I started work really early today. That was kind of fun and different. I wouldn't want to start at 7.30 every day, but it's kind of nice to have the opportunity to do that from some time to time because it just is fun to not do what you usually do. Anyway, so I finished at 3.30, ran some errands, had dinner, and now I've got my sleeves rolled up literally and metaphorically, and I'm gonna get the chores done. I know that's not like a fun change of routine type thing, but I always do my chores Saturday mornings. And I like that, it works well. I really like that feeling of like 10, 30 or 11 on a Saturday and you look around and go like, yeah, my house is clean. Everything has been cleaned and now I get to enjoy it for the next 36 hours straight or something. I thought, why not do it on a Thursday night for a change and then Saturday morning, I just get to get up and enjoy my weekend. Why not? Okay, before I can say that anymore, I'm going to get to work it's the first day that it's been warm enough this spring to have the windows open for longer than like 10 or 15 minutes. So the whole house is just filled with crisp, cool, but like fresh air and it is so delightful. However, it is going to get cold again overnight, so <laughs> gotta close them up before I get ready for bed. All right, the first thing I have to say about Marlowe Murder Club is that it is an exceptionally binge-worthy book. I am loving how easy it is to just get pulled into this plot, which I know that's partly because it's a mystery and that's like part of how mysteries work as a story as opposed to like other story types, but I think this one is doing a very good job of it. I always want to read another chapter. It's a book that when I'm reading it, time flies, it doesn't drag, and that's really delightful. I'm not loving it quite so much now as I was the other night. It's still really solid. I think on atmosphere, 10 out of 10, absolutely love it. Can totally picture this type of small town so clearly. And I think it's doing a phenomenal job there. In terms of like antics and humor and that sort of stuff, I would call this pretty like 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun with it. I am going to read you a quote. This is from about halfway through the book, but don't worry. I don't think it spoils anything. Because as far as I can see, she could be our killer. Beck's eyes widened in amazement. That's not possible. She does yoga. Judith wasn't sure she'd heard correctly. Are you saying people who do yoga can't commit murder? I think it's really the type of thing that either you find it hilarious or you don't like it at all. Another example from the other night was, the Church of England was the perfect metaphor for the country as a whole, she felt. Pleasing to the eye, staunchly old-fashioned, and waning very much in popularity. Love it. I have been laughing out loud with this book. But I can also definitely see that this is not going to be a humor that is for everyone. Read a sample, see if it's the type of thing you would like. The one element that I'm not really 
loving at the moment is the characters and how they're written. At first, I was really into the characters. I thought they were so good, so intriguing. What a wonderful take on essentially the Miss Marple, but in 2020 or whatever year this is set in. In a modern context, what would that look like? That sort of vibe. I loved it. But as we get more and more into the book and we get more and more sort of character development, to me, they feel a bit cliched. Cardboard? I don't know. Maybe they're cliches and stereotypes for a reason and it's actually a sort of impactful character study of these archetypes. I think that's sort of an opinion thing. It's not a type of character writing that works for me. But that's okay. Everything else is really fun. That's not enough to take me out of the book. Breaking routines doesn't have to be all about like, you know, doing chores and working out and stuff. Sometimes it can just be getting up early and reading on the couch because that's actually really delightful and that's what I'm doing this morning. I've read two more chapters of Catherine. I'm making really steady progress on that. I realized one, for whatever reason, it's not a book I'm enjoying before bed and two, it's a book that I'm enjoying a lot more like a chapter or two a day as opposed to trying to read like a huge chunk of it at a time. And since I've switched over to trying to read a chapter or two in the morning or at lunchtime or sometime not right when I'm falling asleep, I've been making great progress and finding it really interesting. I finished reading Mort at lunchtime but I'm not going to do any sort of closeout review here because in like an hour I'm going to be on a live show on Katja's channel so I will link that in the description and if you would like to hear all of the final thoughts on Mort make sure you go watch that because I'm sure we're about to have an amazing discussion and you won't want to have missed it. I didn't quite finish Marlow Murder Club. Why do I always want to say Marlow Mystery Club? I don't know. Last night before bed because I was tired, but I just finished it this morning when I woke up. That was fantastic. I found the end maybe a bit predictable. I don't usually guess the resolution to mystery novels. It's one of the things I like about them. I'm not good at guessing them, so it's always a surprise. In this one, by maybe 75% of the way through the book, I had a really solid idea of what the solution was going to be and who was going to be involved, if not exactly all the details. So if you usually guess the resolution, maybe this one isn't for you. I really liked it. I thought it was fun. I stand by my point the other day that the characters could have been better, but that might just be a my preferences thing. Honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in a potential sequel. I don't know if there's going to be a sequel or not. It feels like the sort of book that will have a sequel though. I wonder if in a second book, once we already know the characters a bit, they've had a bit of development, we'll be able to see more interesting sides to them and more interesting interactions between them. It can be hard in an initial murder mystery novel to introduce this whole cast of people that you need to know and develop their stories a bit and develop their relationships between each other, which are just forming and also have the plot. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, just enjoyment wise. Oh my goodness, this was exactly what I wanted to read. Cover pick for the win. I don't know why I've been saying for the win lately and it's kind of disturbing to me. Usually right around now I'd be going, oh, I should start doing some chores. But other than like a very small sink of dishes, I don't have anything I really need to get done today. Chores wise, I have some booktube stuff I want to get done. I'd like to go out for a walk, but I don't know. I've got lots of free time ahead of me, which is a pleasant surprise. I'm not a surprise. I knew it was going to happen because I did my chores on Thursday, but like, you know what I mean. I think I might start by doing some booktube stuff because I can do that from the coziness of my couch. I almost forgot to mention, I also decided to DNF Saint Death's Daughter. If you'd like to hear more about this book, check out last week's weekly vlog up here. It's a YA fantasy novel about a necromancer in a family of assassins. I didn't 
dislike it. There was nothing wrong with it. It just didn't grab me at all. So I decided that I would stop reading it. Okay, tomorrow's video is captioned and totally ready to go live, so that's good. I got next Sunday's video edited and uploaded, and I think it's time to move around a bit before I start reading anything. I should probably not spend literally all day sitting on the couch. That would not feel good. So I'm gonna do the dishes and go for a walk. And while I do that, I actually get to start a new book, which is very exciting. I finished Mort, my audiobook, yesterday, so it is perfect timing to start The Pull of the Stars. I'm going to, as I said, be listening to this on audio, and I'm buddy reading it with Gemma of Gemma of Books. I really don't know too much about it. It's about three women on a maternity ward during the flu pandemic in, the in like 1918, 1919. It's set in Ireland. It's supposedly incredibly harrowing, but also hopeful somehow. I don't know, it's my first Emma Donoghue book. I'm really excited to give it a go. And yeah, I guess I should just get up off the couch and do that. Oh my goodness, this book is exactly what I wanted to read right now. I thought for some reason it was gonna be sad in a way I didn't wanna read, but it's actually sad in the way that makes me listen to like over a quarter of an audiobook in one sitting because I'm just like, I can't stop. I need to keep listening. This is so good. Wow, The Pull of the Stars is just blowing me away. I think it is one of those books and one of those types of writing that either you go, wow, this is the best thing ever. I love it. Or you're gonna go, this feels so cliche and trite. Why do people care about this? can't remember what I've seen in terms of reviews. I've just noticed the ones that are good because I wanted to read it anyways. For me, it works. It is fantastic. The characters are really interesting to me. This sort of group of women coming together in these extraordinary circumstances that have brought these six women who've never met each other all together into this one microcosm of a moment. That is exactly the sort of stuff I love so much. I find the way the atmosphere is built really works for my brain. It's very description-y. There's a lot of talk about like the nurse does this and then she checked that and then did this. But for whatever reason, maybe it's the audiobook, maybe it's the writing, maybe it's both. It does it in a way that feels entrancing and almost poetic. The world building makes you feel like you're just inhabiting the character's body and experiencing the world around them. Oh! Okay, I finally remembered the last thing that I wanted to say right now at least, and that is that I don't think this book would have the same impact if it was written today. Because to the best of my knowledge, and editing Rosie will cut in here if I am wrong, this book was written either entirely or largely before the COVID-19 pandemic started. And so many of the things that are coming up in this book are such direct parallels for everything that we're seeing happening now and that we have been seeing in our healthcare system and our society for the last two years. Obviously it's a bit different because it's in the historical context, It's they're actively at the end of World War I. It's very different but also horrifyingly the same in the sense that we think, oh my goodness, it's come so far, but then we're facing exactly the same issues now that they were a hundred years ago. Obviously this isn't non-fiction, so I'm trying to remember that, but just from a thinking about the book and the impact it's having on me, I feel like if this were written now, with the knowledge that we're in this situation, weirdly would lose its impact. It's the fact that it feels almost prophetic, but it wasn't because anyone who was paying attention could have told you that we'd be in this situation. Anyway, this is gonna get way too political. So I'm going to finish making my box mac and cheese and eat lunch. I had big, exciting reading goals for this afternoon. It was gonna be so delightful. And I think getting up at 6.30 every morning this week caught up with me because <laughs> Just slept for like two hours after lunch and definitely did not get any reading done. But that's okay. Clearly, if I was falling asleep on the couch, my body needed the sleep. So hopefully it is feeling rested and recharged. All those good things.
I don't usually do any car vlog updates because I mean I barely ever drive anywhere other than the grocery store but I've just had an afternoon out of checking out some shops in a part of town that I don't normally visit it was lovely I did buy two books are you even surprised I got Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh I've been wanting to read this for quite a while so picked it up second hand and also The Feather Thief by Kirk Wallace Johnson. This is not a book I would usually read physically, but again, it was used bookstores. I've wanted to read this book for ages. I've wanted to pick it up. I've wanted to check it out. It sounds amazing. It's about like a heist where the thing being stolen is feathers, which sounds just so cool. Anyway, very exciting. Looking forward to reading this. I should probably not be buying more books because I've already bought some books in March and like this has to stop, especially with the physical books. But I have pretty much finished my March TBR. I have one book left that I might read, but I might just leave it for another time because I'm not really in the mood for it. I finished Catherine this morning. I've talked a bunch about it though, so I'm going to leave the rest of my thoughts for my wrap up. Gotta have some content for my end of month wrap up right with all these vlogs so I can't tell you everything now as I said I've got like 10 days left in the month or something like that so I've got some time to read I think I'm gonna just try and read as many of the books that I just bought as possible the ones I bought today the ones I bought a couple weeks ago I'm excited about these books so I'm gonna try and read them actually starting right now because <laughs> I'm gonna pick up some takeout for our dinner on my way home but it's not quite ready yet I'm going to chill out in the car for a while and read I just completely forgot to close out this vlog, film that last clip. It's now Tuesday and I need to get this video up, so editing Rosie is popping on to say, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Let me know if you are a routine person or a non-routine person. I'm curious to hear if you are a routine person, do you feel like sometimes you need to just like push yourself to do things you wouldn't normally do and it makes you really happy? Because that seems to be very much the case for me. And as always, if you like this video, I hope you will leave a like down below. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.